What is going on everybody? My name is John Solo and as of yesterday, December 15th, The Last Jedi has officially been released. I don't want to waste any time, I want to get right into my review, but for those who haven't seen the movie yet, I have a few pretty important spoiler-free messages for you. First off, this is unlike any Star Wars movie you have ever seen. If you thought The Force Awakens was a rehash and you were worried about that being the case with this one, don't be. To be honest, there was so much new information to process that even I felt a little overwhelmed, and I went into that theater having read every book that came out this year that was connected to The Last Jedi. Needless to say, I'm looking forward to seeing it again this weekend. Secondly, go into this movie with an open mind. I'm seeing a surprising amount of negative reviews online and even getting texts from friends complaining about the movie and to be honest, I really don't get it. There are complaints that are reasonable, and I definitely have a few of my own. But it's frustrating to see people who haven't read the books, the comics, haven't seen the shows, people who essentially know nothing about the Star Wars universe outside of what they had seen in the movies, making complaints that are easily justifiable if you know anything about the expanded universe. I'm not trying to come off as pretentious like those aren't real fans because they don't know every bit of background information because that's not the case at all. I'm just saying that while the movie definitely isn't perfect and while there is justifiable criticism, if you come out of the theater hating this movie, it's probably because A, you were blinded by nostalgia, or B, you were committed to hating it before you even saw it. And the third and final thing I wanna say before getting into spoilers Spoilers, I really, really liked this movie. I'm a little hesitant to say I loved it, but that's mostly because I'm still trying to process everything I saw. Not only that, but when I use the word love to describe my feelings for Star Wars, I typically think of episodes four, five, and six. I love those movies. However, I was not alive to see those movies in theaters. I would say that most Star Wars fans in 2017 weren't. As I've said in multiple videos, there isn't a point in my life where I can look back and not remember having seen all three films. Because of that, it's hard to make comparisons between this trilogy and that one. When you watch episode five in 2017, the cliffhangers don't feel like cliffhangers because the rest of the saga's events are so ingrained into your memory. So maybe let's try to not make those direct comparisons anymore and judge these movies as the independent films they are, at the very least until the trilogy is completed. That's at least what I'm gonna do, and to the people writing page-long reviews bashing these films, for the sake of your blood pressure and hairline, consider doing the same. Okay, from this point forward, this video is going to be riddled with spoilers. If you haven't seen the movie yet and plan on doing so, I highly encourage you close out of this review. Maybe hit the like button on your way out. Honestly, I don't know where to start this, and I'm a little nervous about word vomiting and losing track of my thoughts. I guess the best place to start is what did I like about this movie? For one, like I said earlier, it's unlike any Star Wars movie we've seen in the past. There's definitely callbacks to the original film and small references that don't distract you too much from what's going on. Like for some reason, anytime someone uses the gunner seat on the Millennium Falcon, they gotta let out a little woo-hoo, just like Han did in A New Hope. Finn did it in The Force Awakens, and Rey did it in this movie. Movie. Small references like this are scattered throughout the film, but unlike The Force Awakens, the plot didn't feel built around these references. The story itself was entirely fresh, and I think that's what Star Wars fans needed. Actually, not only was the plot fresh, they threw curveballs every step of the way. For example, who's Snoke? Doesn't matter, cause he's dead. Who will raise parents? They're nobody and they're dead too. I don't think that's necessarily the end for either of those plot points. I can almost guarantee they're gonna make a novel about Snoke's origin similar to what they did with Thrawn and Tarkin. And of course, we don't know if Kylo is telling the truth about Rey's parents. There's a very good chance he was just trying to manipulate her. That being said, I actually like that Rey's parents are no one, that they're just junk traders from Jakku. It does leave us with questions like, why is Rey so powerful? in the forest if her parents are no one significant, but I think I have an answer to this and I'm gonna be making a theory video about it pretty soon. It really does make it sad though that Rey was counting the days that she had been on Jakku when her parents had no intention of ever coming back. And going back to Snoke's death, that was literally the last thing that I thought was gonna happen. I'll admit it's kind of annoying that they did that, but as a result, I think an even more appropriate villain emerged in the form of Kylo Ren. We've already seen an old, deformed know-it-all try to take over the galaxy. Now we have Kylo in control, which I would 
would almost compare to Darth Vader before he got his injuries on Mustafar. There's a lot of potential there. I don't know what he's going to do without a teacher though. Speculation aside, that fight scene in Snoke's chambers blew me away. The Praetorian guards are like the royal guards Star Wars fans always wanted and honestly deserve. It was definitely an unconventional fight scene with the lightsabers constantly changing hands and those crazy weapons the Praetorian guards had, but it's officially one of my favorite scenes in the whole saga. Finn's storyline was also an interesting one, albeit probably my least favorite of the movie. We saw some great character development with him thanks to Rose Tico, and I'm pretty glad about that because now he feels like a real character. One of my biggest critiques about The Force Awakens was that there weren't many opportunities for the characters to show off their personalities. Poe was gone pretty much the entire movie. All we knew about him was that he was a good pilot, and Finn and Rey were both trying to figure out who they were and what they wanted to do with their lives. But luckily, thankfully, this movie fixed that completely. I also really enjoyed Laura Dern as Amelyn Haldo. I was looking forward to seeing her portrayal after I read the Leia book this year because in that story, her personality was so out of the box and crazy, but Laura Dern did an excellent job. Not to mention, her using light speed to split Snoke's ship was an awesome way for her to go out and perfectly fitting for her character. We don't get to see that much of her in the movie, but in the novel you learn that she loves danger and suicide missions and is basically an adrenaline junkie, so I thought that was the perfect way for her to go. Like in that book, there were multiple instances where Leia was like, Amelyn, you can't come with me. This is a dangerous mission. You're going to put your life at risk. And Amelyn was like, danger? Sign me up. And she was only 16 or so in that story, so it was really cool to see that trait stick with her all the way to the end. That being said, I've also heard a lot of people say that that death would have been perfectly fitting for Leia, and I totally agree with that too. I think that would have been fantastic. I'm thinking now it's time we talk about the negatives because if I don't stop myself, I could talk about the positives all day. One part that left me very disappointed was the scenes on Canto Bite. I just read the Canto Bite book this week, so I was really looking forward to them exploring the city way more than they did. I think it's cool they expanded the Star Wars universe by adding this Las Vegas type planet. I thought that was very fitting. The scenes just ended up being kind of lackluster for being set on a planet that had so much potential. It almost feels like those scenes were just forced in there to show off a new planet, but there's also no way of knowing right now what scenes were cut out for the theater release either. One small thing that kind of got on my nerves, and I really hope I don't anger anyone by saying this, the music. I love the Star Wars soundtracks. I listen to them all regularly when working on Star Wars content. However, for those who don't know, most of the main characters in the main saga have their own themes. Vader, Rey, Leia, to name a few. For the first hour or so of the movie, I felt like they overused those themes. Every time Leia was shown, her theme would play. Same happened with Rey and the Resistance. As I said, I love all of those themes, but for someone who's hyper aware of what each of those melodies represents, they just stuck out a little too much for me. I just would have appreciated something a little more subtle to help carry me through the scenes instead of these iconic melodies being used over and over and over again. Anyways, moving on, what probably annoyed me the most about this movie was the underutilization of Captain Phasma. Once again, she was a huge disappointment and I don't understand why they didn't use her character more. She is a perfect villain. She's intelligent, an excellent fighter, laser focused on getting what she wants, and a bona fide psychopath. Yet for some reason, she was in the movie for five minutes and died. Like, come on, man, so much wasted potential. I really hope she comes back in the next movie all burnt up and disfigured because I don't know. I don't think she survived, but I really hope she did somehow. The final thing I want to mention that I'm having the hardest time coping with is the death of Luke Skywalker. I am not happy that he died really at all. I think the death itself was okay. It was certainly poetic that he went out looking at twin sons, but once again, so much potential for a character that we didn't get to see. I don't doubt that he's going to return in episode nine as a forest ghost. I certainly hope he does. But to me, it almost feels disrespectful to Mark Hamill to end the character that's been a part of his life for over 40 years the way that they did. I'm glad that Luke was at peace when he died. I was honestly afraid that they were going to kill him off the same way they killed off my favorite character, Han Solo. I just feel like it's going to be weird watching the original trilogy now, knowing how he goes out. I'll admit, I could be wrong though. Actually, speaking of that, I think that's what I'm going to go do right now. I'm going to go test my hypothesis and see how I feel. To summarize my feelings in a few words, I thought episode 8 was fantastic. I feel a little conflicted about some of their decisions, but ultimately, I 
trust their judgment and I can't even imagine what episode nine has in store. Of course, I wanna know what you beautiful people think about it though, so leave your thoughts in a comment down below. If you have any particular thoughts or opinions that stand out in your head, please make a point to comment them because I haven't gotten to talk to that many people about the movie yet since no one's really seen it and I'm dying to hear the opinions of people who aren't film critics or who didn't go into the movie expecting to hate it. Just please, if there's spoilers in your comment, give a warning to everyone else. Also, if you have any questions about the movie you want answered, comment those too and comment your suggestions for future episodes of Star Wars 101 because I'm gonna be doing a lot for The Last Jedi. In addition to any suggestions you have for future episodes of Star Wars 101, I'm specifically gonna be doing a lot of Last Jedi content, so if you got suggestions, let me know. If you enjoyed this review, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe for new Star Wars content every single week, and follow me on social media to stay updated on what I'm doing between videos. Thank you all so much for watching, may the force be with you, and remember, John shot first.